Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Today we're going to shift gears a little bit and we are going to add the cam on this part for a 1911 grip. I'm going to do the cam for this and show you guys how to do it. And then what's going to happen is Aaron Powder is going to actually machine this part. He's going to do it on his Sile X7 machine. And uh, so I'll do the cam, he'll do the machining, and we'll end up with a finished part. So I encourage you to go and watch his channel. We'll put a link to it in the description and hopefully a card. And I also need to thank Morgan Olaf for the part that you see on the screen. Um, he has modeled one of these before, and he shared the file with me and showed me his method for doing this. Um, and if you guys want to see how to draw one of these up and you want to see the, the steps on how to uh, do that, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a secondary video to show the CAD and how you would draw this part up. Uh, Morgan also put a video a link to his Instagram page. He's made a couple pretty cool 1911 grips where he put a Cobra logo on them and some pretty cool texture patterns. So we'll put a link to those so you can see what those were as well. And to save a bit of time, I'm going to walk you through what I've done so far. I started with the bottom side of this part, and all I did was I faced it and profiled it. Uh, so you can see the tool pass here, the facing, drilled some of the holes, uh, profiled around the outside of it, and finished contoured it. Then we, we roll it over and do a second uh, setup, which does nothing but buzzes the hat that's left on the top. So we have uh, machine sides in every face. Uh, then we bore the holes in the setup so that we can bolt this to a fixture plate. The next operation is a fixture plate. And if I turn this on, you can see that I've got a, a fixture plate here, uh, where if I go to the jig plate, all we do is we drill a couple holes and tap them, uh, for the final operation, which is what I'm going to show you, uh, the cam process on. So I'll shut that off and turn the, the, the grip back on. And I need to turn on one more sketch, so I'm going to turn on this first sketch as well. We're going to need that for the finished uh, setup as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new setup, and I'm going to move my work coordinate system, but where I want to put it is at the intersection of that sketch down there. So that's not a stock box point. Instead, that's a selected point. And I can go grab that point. So we're going to Z off the bottom, and then Aaron will pick up on the X and the Y. Uh, on the piece of stock and that's how he's going to touch this off. All right, so let's move over to the stock tab and we're going to define our stock as a piece of fixed size box. And I'm going to enter the values that's going to be from the previous operations that we've done. So we're going to end up with a width of 1.61 uh, with a depth of 4.35 and a Z height of 2.65. And what little stock there is left on the top is going to be from the bottom it's going to be above the part, so we're going to offset from bottom with a zero offset. So if I look at that from the front, you can see the bottom of the part and the bottom of the stock are the same. And and one of the previous operations, I left ten thousandths of stock, so I could ball mill that off later on. So we're good with that setup like that. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, one of the first things I'm going to do on this part is I'm going to rough it all out. And I'm going to do that using a 3D adaptive operation. I don't need that sketch on anymore, so I'm going to turn it off. So I'm going to rough this entire part out with a 3D adaptive. I'm going to go grab a tool, and it's going to be out of my uh, document. It's a 12 millimeter flat. And I'm going to go to the geometry. And what I'm going to tell Fusion here is I want it to figure out everything that's in the yellow box to machine it. It's just going to figure out what's stock and what's part and figure out the rest. I'm going to go to the heights tab and we're going to cut from the stock top to the model bottom. I want to cut past the model bottom a little bit and I'm going to enter in minus 0 0.03. Now I only want to go 20 thousandths of an inch past, but you'll see why I'm putting 30 thousandths of an inch here in a second. On the passes, my optimal load is pretty good. If I edit the expression, it's tool diameter times 0.2 or 20% of the tool diameter, which is a great value to start with. And for the maximum roughing step down, I'm going to edit the expression. I'm not going to type in a uh, a static value. I'm going to do tool underscore flute. There it is. So it popped up the parameter for me. Tool flute length is what I'm going to go for depth. Now we're never going to go that deep, but um, I'm just going to use that for the maximum roughing step down, which is 1.547. And for the fine step down, I'm going to do 0 0.03 inches. This is what's going to kind of ridge the part so the ball mill doesn't have so much material to chunk off. Uh, I am going to tell it to order by area, and we're going to leave some stock. I'm going to leave 10 thousandths radial and 10 thousandths axial. 
This is the reason I had to go 30 thousandths of an inch past if I want to end up with 20 because I'm going to subtract 10 thousandths off of that and that's going to give me down to my 20 thousandths of an inch past the part. We'll hop over to the linking tab. I'm going to do a minimum retraction. I'm going to change my stay on level to about 70% and my lift height of 0 0.01. When I'm cutting um, air, I don't need to cut it at the same feed rate as what I cut metal. So I'm going to enter this as 200 inches a minute. Now Aaron's going to adjust this value because I don't know the maximum cutting feed rate of his machine. This is a G01 move. He'll look that up in his machine and he'll make that edit on his. But we want to increase this feed rate so when the tool's returning back to the beginning, it's going there as quickly as it can. I think everything else looks okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. Oh, I didn't I didn't miss one thing. I'm going to edit it before it calculates too far. So let's just go and edit that tool path. I want to turn on something called the shallow areas. As this part starts to get uh, kind of flatter towards the top, I wanted to make sure it gets as close to that as it can. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And it'll recalculate based on that new parameter that I gave it. And in a second, if I make this a little bit bigger, we'll see it's calculating. These, little, these blue, line, blue lines right here are the fine step down values that we've entered. So that 3D adaptive is done. Um, the next thing I want to do is I would like to do a 3D contour on this surface with a ball mill. So from the 3D menu, I'm going to choose 3D contour. We're going to go grab a tool, and the tool we're going to use here, if I filter this, is going to be a 6 millimeter ball. So we'll grab that, and on the geometry, I don't want to machine a silhouette, I want to machine a selection. I'm going to choose this selection, and Fusion is going to kind of give me a weird choice. I'll just click that one more time and move my mouse around to where I want that boundary to flow. Hit the green plus and we'll lock that in. I want to turn on contact point boundary. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the additional offset and you're going to see where that's going to cause me some problems in a minute and we'll come back and fix that. But on the passes, I want to set my step down value and I'm going to do a 0 0.01 step down. I want to order from bottom up so that the tool starts at the bottom and works its way up to the top. On the linking, I'm going to make a couple choices, minimum retraction. And I'm going to tell this tool it's okay if it just plunges right in where it needs to go because there's really no stock for it to worry about anyway. So we'll, we'll hit OK and we'll see a pretty noisy tool path when we're done. Uh, the reason that is, is when Fusion generates this tool path, it's taking the perfect BREP model, which is what you see on the screen, the boundary representation, and it's converting it to an STL file, but we've picked a perfect boundary and there's kind of a... Uh, some gaps that the, the software can see. I'll put a card to a previous video that I've done so you can take a deeper depth uh, look at what I'm talking about here. But what I wanna look at is on the passes, there's a tolerance value here. It's 0 0.0004, 4 tenths of an inch. What I'm gonna do is on the boundary, um, if I, I guess I should take a second, if I shift select over that field while I hold the shift button down, you'll see some information about that dialog box peer up. Uh, a pop-up. And so the thing that I'm most concerned about is the parameter name here and the system is called tolerance. So I'm going to go to the geometry tab and in the additional offset I'm going to type in the negative symbol and the word tolerance. And that's the only change I'm going to make and we'll hit OK and you're going to see that this toolpath is greatly cleaned up just by doing that. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to use a morph toolpath to go across the top of this. Uh, I don't want the tool to dive down into this little into these holes here, so let's go ahead and break this into a couple steps. I have a helper sketch that's going to help me with this. It's that sketch right there. And what I'm going to do is from the 3D menu, I'm going to select the morph command. So 3D morph, we're going to use the same tool, and on the geometry, the first thing I have to do is select my curve selections that are going to drive this geometry. So those are the two sketches that I'm going to use right there. And also very important that these arrows face the same direction. For my machining boundary, I'm going to do a selection and I'm going to grab that region once, click it a second time, move my mouse around until I get the, the total boundary that I want and hit the green plus to lock that in. I'm going to do my negative tolerance here and I'm going to turn on contact point boundary. We'll jump over to the uh, passes tab and I'm going to put a pretty big value in here at first so I can kind of show you what's going on. We'll do 0 0.06 and we'll hit OK. So we get a toolpath. So what you're going to see is this toolpath morphs from this line to this line. So it starts out kind of straight and kind of follows, ends up in the same direction as the other line. Um, pretty nice toolpath for that. So let's edit this. Let's take a look at one more thing, I guess, while we're out here. 
Notice that my morph is jumping down into that hole though. I really don't want it to go down in there, especially if I have that screw holding this uh, part to the fixture. So what I'm gonna do is edit that and let's go to the passes and set our step over value back to 10 thousandths. And on the geometry, I want to add some additional model surfaces. Now what I have in here is a couple bodies. If I turn these on, you can see I've kind of used the patch environment to patch those two surfaces. I just need to click on that face and that face, and once I have those selected, I can turn them both off. You can actually select them with their visibility off. Um, and we'll hit OK. And now we'll see a much tighter surface, but notice it doesn't dip into that hole anymore. So we've got that um, all finished up. I may want to make one more change to this. I want to just get it off the part a little bit so you can see that there's a pass extension value. I'm going to add a 50 thousandths of an inch pass extension be kind of hard to see. It just takes a tangent of the tool, extends off the surface 50 thousandths of an inch. So I've got my part all uh, finished up now. I'm gonna turn the sketch off. We don't need to see it anymore. But one thing I do wanna do is we're gonna add some texture to this part. And we're gonna do that using the 3D parallel tool path. So I'm gonna choose 3D and parallel. And this time I'm gonna go grab a different tool, a three millimeter ball. So let's go through here and look for it. There's a three millimeter ball. Click OK. And on the geometry, I'm again going to machine a selection. So I'm going to click on that once, click on that a second time, repath it, hit my green plus to lock that in. We'll do our contact point boundary and minus tolerance again one more time. We're going to go over to the passes tab. I, I need to turn on my model, I guess, as well, and we'll select those two patch surfaces. We don't want it to dive down into that, so we have those two bodies uh, turned on. On the passes tab, we're gonna set our pass direction to be 45 degrees so it goes uh, across the part at an angle, but I also wanna turn on add perpendicular passes. And on the linking, I want it to do the minimum amount of retraction, so I'm gonna choose minimum retraction and we'll hit okay. Um, I should also specify a step over value. I'm gonna do 0.1, Aaron can always adjust this if he wants to, and we'll hit okay and what we'll see is a crisscross pattern that goes uh, across the top of our part. Now, right now, this isn't doing what I need it to do. I need this to go into the part so it actually makes a textured surface. To do that, we have to kind of trick it a little bit and go to the Passes tab, and we're gonna turn on Stock to leave. We'll set our radial stock to be zero, but we'll set our axial stock, I'll do negative 0.03 inches, and I'll hit OK. When I hit OK, you'll see that the toolpath is now below the surface of the part. And that should wrap up what I wanna do with this. If we wanna check out to see what this looks like, I'm gonna click on the Setup, and I'll turn off my actual model at the top of the browser. Let's simulate this with the stock on, and let's do a play and see what we get. So here comes our adaptive operation that goes around the outside and starts to rough out the profile. And now you'll start to see it making its uh, step up moves, which is really the fine step down. So you can see the kind of terraced effect that's gonna leave so the ball mill doesn't have to bite off so much. Usually when 3D adaptive operations get done, the part looks kind of cool because you can see the shape, but it's not exactly smooth yet. So it'll keep going until it gets closer to the top. And you'll see that we won't have very much material left over for that ball mill to have to come and worry about. So here comes our 3D horizontal starting at the bottom and working up. And then we'll have the morph tool path. I'll make this one go a little bit faster so that we don't have to watch the whole thing. So we're getting closer to the end. So I'll slow that down a little bit again now. And then here comes our final tool path, which is the one that gives our part the texture. So it's just gonna go uh, 30 thousandths of an inch deep, stepping over 100 thousandths of an inch at a time. That's what's given us our textured ridge look. And when it gets done, it's gonna come back and do a 45 degree perpendicular pass. So here comes our perpendicular pass, and that's what's gonna sort of give our grip the texture that we wanna see on it. We'll let it go a little faster, and there's gonna be our final result. So don't forget to check out Aaron's channel, DCT Teacher One, where he's gonna actually take this part and machine it so we can see it in real life. And again, special thanks to Morgan Olaf. Go check out his channel, link, uh, link in the video. And uh, he has some pretty cool things, and I appreciate him helping me with this CAD model. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later.